Hello, we will now talk about the uh, last part of chapter seven, section two, which deals with the sampling distribution of the difference in two sample proportions. This uh, may be a bit complicated, but I think if you can, you can figure it out if you, uh, if you try. So first of all, let, let me, uh, um, let me talk about kind of the theory uh, behind this before we, before we do a problem. So early in section two, we talked about the sampling distribution of a Portion. So let's say, for instance, our population, the group we want to know something about, um, is the, uh, the customers of this office supply company, let's say, and the parameter uh, of the customers that we're interested in is the proportion that are satisfied with their service. So that is the, something that the company wants to know. And let's just pretend that the true population proportion is 0.7. In other words, if we did a census and we quizzed all of the customers of this company, all right, seventy percent of them are actually satisfied with the service. And let's just pretend this company has ten thousand customers. So that is our big in our population size. So seventy percent of them, which would be seven thousand, are satisfied with the service. But the company doesn't know this, and so they're estimating it. And so they take a sample of size two hundred, and they find the the proportion in their sample that are uh, that are satisfied. Well, what is a sampling distribution? A sampling distribution is every value this sample proportion could take. So let's just pretend in our sample that we got, um, let's pretend that we got like 68%, 0.68. And so that would be a P hat that would be right there, okay? And so uh, the concept of a sampling distribution of this, if we took many samples of size 200, and I explained this more fully earlier in the section and in the first section, if we took another sample, we're going to get another p hat. And if we took a third sample of size 200, we're going to get another p hat. And they would all vary just because of random chance or what we call sampling variability. And all the possible values of p hat, this is what we call a sampling distribution. Okay, a sampling distribution. And this sampling distribution, this collection of p hats, uh, it will be approximately normal. It'll be approximately normal if n times p and n times one minus p are greater than 10. So that's our really our first condition that we have to check. And so this would be 200 times 0.7. And so that's 140. This would be 200 times 0.3. That'll be 60. They're both greater than 10. So we have approximate normality. So because these two numbers, both of them have to be bigger than 10, we would say thus normality is met. Normality is met, which means we can use normal CDF and inverse norm in that. All right. And so now in order to solve a problem, we need to know the standard deviation. And so our formula for our standard deviation, sigma, is going to be the square root of P, 0.7, times 1 minus P, which is 0.3, over our sample size, which is 200. And so with that, you would get 0 0.032. 404. And so, and then we could find various probabilities. What's the probability that, you know, their sample proportion, their p hat's going to be more than 0.78, let's say. And we could do normal CDF with that. Of course, in order to be able to use this formula, the other big condition, our, our sample size can't be more than 10% of the population. And so, and we're fine in, in that regard. 10% of the, uh, of the population is 1,000 here. That's clearly more than 200. So we met our conditions. And so in this section, what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna say we got two populations. Let's just pretend that this is the company's franchise in Alabama. So these are the Alabama customers of this office supply company. And so I'll put this as P sub A for Alabama. The proportion of the Alabama customers that are satisfied is 0.6. But let's just pretend we have another franchise of the company, which is in Georgia. Now in Georgia, the proportion of satisfied people, satisfied customers is 0.6. So the population proportion there is 0.6. And there, of course, they don't know that. And so they are taking a sample. They take a sample, let's say, of size 250. And let's just pretend in Georgia, the population size, in other words, the, um, the number of customers that this company's Georgia franchise has is 15,000. So clearly our sample size is not more than 10% of our population. So th this will have a sampling distribution. We get a P hat here. Now, once again, we, 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 you know, 
they don't know that it's 0.6. It's probably going to be somewhere close to 0.6, like let's say 0.58. So there's a p hat there. And if we took another sample of size 250 and we got more and more p hats, here is the sampling distribution for the Georgia franchises. All the possible values p hat could take in repeated sampling. Looks like that. Now it's going to be approximately normal, the same rule here, if n times p. And so that's going to be 0 0.6 times 250 and then 0 0.4 times 250. They both have to be greater than or equal to 10 to have normality. And 250 times 0 0.6 is 150. And 250 times 0 0.4, so that's 100. They're both greater than 10, so normality is met. So we have normality. Okay, so that's good. Our standard deviation for our Georgia be the square root uh, 0 0.6 times 0.4 over 250. Of course, that formula is on your formula sheet. And we talked about it uh, earlier in the previous video. And so that is equal to 0 0.03098. Okay, so now we've got two samples. And what we're interested in is the difference. We're the interested in the difference. This company wants to know the difference between their Alabama franchise and their Georgia franchise in regards to their proportion of happy customers. They want to estimate this, the proportion in Alabama that are happy minus the proportion of Georgia that are happy. And I'll put sub, sub G for Georgia, sorry, sorry, sub G for Georgia. And in the world of stats, we're, all, we're very interested in differences. All right, we, we, you know, we want to know if there's a difference between the people that took the placebo and the people that took the actual drug in regards to, let's say, the proportion that got better. Or we want to know if there's a difference between um, you know, the proportion of students that, uh, that pass a test who took the computer program for, minus the proportion of students who passed the test who did not go th through the computer program. Or we want to know the difference in the trees that got the fertilizer and those that didn't get the fertilizer, et cetera, et cetera. We're very interested in differences, okay? So in this section, so I'll call this um, a difference, okay? And so we are going to estimate this difference, okay? with p hats, so p hat sub a minus p hat sub g, all right? So the question that we are gonna say, how does this vary, okay? Now, the thing about it is, we're expecting this to be, this, we're expecting this to be 0.7 minus 0.6, which is 0.1, but there's gonna be variability going on because we're taking a sample here and a sample here, okay? The people doing this don't know the 0.7 to 0.6. They're taking a sample here. They're randomly selecting one of these p hats and one of these p hats and then finding the difference. And so we'll call that the difference. And so for shorthand, I'll just say the difference. And so I'm expecting it to be 0.7 minus 0.6. So I'm expecting it to be 0.1. But when I take one of these, I might get like 0.72 here and 0.59 here. And I subtract them and get 0.13. So my difference is up here. But when I do it again, I might get 0.69 here and 0.61 here, that'd be 0.08. So that'd be another That'd be another difference, okay? And if I kept doing this again and again, took many different samples, and I kept subtracting the Alabama proportion minus the Georgia proportion, and I kept getting more and more differences, okay? This is the sampling distribution of the differences, all the possible differences, taking many, many samples, okay? And guess what? This will be approximately normal as long as n times p and n times one is minus p for both samples are greater than 10. All four of those numbers have to be, have to be bigger than 10. All right, so what would, what's the mean of this distribution? So the mean, because in order to do normal CDF or to do calculations, we need to know the mean of standard deviation. Well, the mean is gonna be, and the notation would be the mean of the difference, or like in your formula sheet, it has mean of p hat sub one minus p hat sub two, so the mean of this difference, you just subtract the means. So that's just gonna be P sub A minus P sub G. So in this case, that's gonna be 0.7 minus 0.6, and that's 0.1. And so on your formula sheet, so on your formula sheet, so that is what that is right there. So notice where it says the sampling distribution for proportions. And so this is if you're finding the difference of two proportions, the mean is that, okay? You just subtract the two parameters like that. And so there's the formula for the standard deviation. Now, let me see if I can explain this to you. You remember back when we, uh, in random variables in chapter six, when we subtracted 
um, two random variables, we would subtract their means. But for the standard deviations, we had to add the variances. And so when you look at this right here, the standard deviation there and the standard deviation there, all right, we're going to have to add these two variances. And so this would be sub A for Alabama and sub G for Georgia. And so I need the variance. So I've got to square it. Well, when you square that, when you square do something squared, the square root of something squared, it just cancels out. And so this is just 0.7 times 0.3 over 200. The variance for Georgia, you just square that and it gets rid of the square root sign. So that's just going to be 0.6 times 0.4 over 250. And so the variance of the difference, p hat sub a minus p hat sub g, when you subtract two random variables, you add the variances. Okay, you add the variances, those two things. And so that's going to be 0.7 times 0.3 over 200. And then plus, plus 0.6 times 0.4 over 250. And then the standard deviation of that, standard deviation of that is going to be the square root of all of that, which would be 0.7 times 0.3 over 200 plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 over 250. And that is how they got that formula. So that formula is on your formula sheet. You can just look at your formula sheet and just plug in plug in the values it's on the second page of your formula sheet right there. So um, anyway, so that is the theory behind uh, behind what we are behind what we are doing. And so now let's look at our note sheet. And so the sampling distribution of the difference in two proportions. The first thing is in order to have approximate normality, all four of these things in the first, for sample one, n times p and n times one minus p for the first sample and n times p and n times one minus p for the second sample, all have to be bigger than 10. If any one of them is less than 10, then you don't have normality, okay? Then like we just, we just talked about, the, the mean that you're gonna be dealing with, you just subtract the two population proportions like that. And then there's your formula for standard deviation, which we just looked at. So let's look at a problem. So in this case, it says in a particular city, 75% of high school graduates can pass a basic um, civics test. In the city, 40% of the adults who do not graduate from high school can pass the civics test. A random sample of 150, random sample means we got good unbiased data, of 150 high school graduates from the city was taken and an independent random sample of 200 of the adults in the city who did not graduate from high school was taken. Let p hat sub g represent the proportion of adults uh, in the high school graduate sample that can pass the physics test and let p hat sub n represent the proportion of adults and then among the non-graduates that can pass the physics test. So first of all, all right, so when we look at this in particular city, it says 75% of the high school graduates can pass a physics test. So that is a parameter. That's of all the high school graduates. So I'll go P sub G is equal to 0.75, okay? And then this 40%, that is the non-high school graduates. So I'll put P sub N for those that did not graduate from high school. So that would be 0.4. And so we're in essence estimating this difference. We know the difference is 0.35, but when you use sampling, there's gonna be variability. So it's gonna be somewhere around, it's gonna vary around uh, 0.35. So describe the sampling distribution of that. Well, first of all, when, so we have to cuss, we have to, when you have, whenever you describe a distribution, you cuss. And so what's our center? Well, that's our mean, our center is our mean. And once again, our mean is, so is that, you just subtract your two proportions. So the mean of our p hat sub graduate minus p hat sub not graduate, that's just gonna be 0.75 minus 0.4, that is 0.35. So in our sampling distribution, it's gonna be centered, the differences are gonna be centered at 0.35, okay? All the differences, when we do this again and again and again, they're gonna be around 0.35. Most of them will be close to 0.35. Some of them just by sampling variability will be off of that. All right, what about the spread? How can we measure the spread? And our big measure of spread is the standard deviation, our sigma, okay? That in our little formula is, once again, just right there, the square root of P times one minus P over N for both and add them together. So that's going to be 0.75 times 0.25 over our sample size, which is 150 for the graduates, plus for the non-graduates, it's gonna be 0.4 times 0.6 
over the sample size of 200. And when you do that, you get, so let's see, you get approximately 0.049497, okay? So that's our standard deviation. And now in regards to the shape, it's gonna be approximately normal. And we have to check all four of these things, approximately normal n times P. So that's gonna be 0.75 times 150 and then 0 0.25 times 150. That's n times P and n times one minus P. And then for the other sample, it's gonna be 0.4 times 200 and then 0.6 times 200. So that's n times P and n times one minus P for that sample. And so this is 112.5 and this is 37.5 and this is 80, this is 120. They are all greater than or equal to 10. So therefore normality is met. If any one of those was less than 10, you wouldn't have normality. So, and I don't have room to write a paragraph here, sorry, but you would, anytime you describe a distribution, you write a little paragraph. And this is what you would say. You would say, well, the sample and distribution of differences is centered around the mean of 0.35, okay? The spread is described by the standard deviation of 0 0.049497. The shape is approximately normal. And that, that takes care of the unusual values or the outliers too. By saying approximately normal, that, that describes the nature of the outliers. And so that is the distribution we're working with. And then it says, what's the probability that the sample proportion of the graduates is at least 0.4 greater than the non-graduates? In other words, that our, that our difference is greater than 0.4 in regards to graduate minus, minus non-graduate, okay? It is greater than 0.4. And so what we've got here, our distribution, here's our distribution of differences like that. There's a, it's, it's around 0.35. And so if you go up, just to, if you go up one standard deviation, well, when you say 0.35 plus 0.49497, that is gonna take you to about 0.3995. That's one standard deviation. One standard deviation below 0.35 minus that. So that's gonna be 0.3005. And so 0.4 is somewhere about right here. I would say there's 0.4 like that. And so we need this area that's greater than. It said, what's the probability that it'd be at least 0.4? So that would be greater than. And so we use normal CDF. So normal CDF from 0.4 to infinity, our mean is 0.35 and our standard deviation is 0 0.049497. That is our lower bound. That is our upper bound. That's our mu, that's our sigma, okay? I ordinarily try to enter in an exact value, but it's a little bit of a pain to enter all that. So I'll just enter the decimal value. And so here we go. And so we shall say second distribution, normal CDF. And so we are going from 0.4, and that's the last problem I did in this calculator, but you would enter in these values right there and right there. And so you go like that, and so you go like that. And so that would be equal to 0 0.1562 about. So there we go. And so in other words, it's not that unusual. This is above 0.05. So it's not that unusual, assuming that this, the true difference is 0.35. Okay. The probability that you get a difference of 0.4 is it's, it happens, you know, about 15 and a half percent of the time. So it's a, it's a plausible, it's a plausible value. So that's it. That's, uh, that completes uh, section two. If you got any questions about that, please let me know. And I just hope you have a great day.